folks. Just a quick video, which is probably not that quick. Had a dilemma. FX3 versus A7 III. Because I'm not an influencer, you're going to get an unbiased opinion. I bought these with my own money. Uh, following, there's going to be a whole bunch of comparison shots. Um, initial observations. Just so you know, settings are... Pre picture profiles are off on both cameras. What I found is that... Um, the a7 III is a lot more saturated, even with the picture profiles off. But that's very, very easily overcome just by going into creative mode on the FX3 and um, upping your color saturation a little bit, whether you put it into vivid or some other mode. So try not to focus too much on the colors because that's not what this is about, okay? So enjoy the following footage. Hopefully it makes some sense. I've gone to a lot of effort to try and get these things side by side. But here's my first original side-by-side, -side, right? So have a look. Tell me what you think. So, I wonder which one is attaining focus quicker. Walk backwards, sideways. Problem is, when you're comparing side-by-side, -side, if I go too fast, doesn't make sense so okay after use real life use I can tell you 100% the FX3 grabs focus with a lot more certainty quicker every time now yes you can adjust the settings or whatever but what I found is that the FX3 at night time can go way underexposed and still grab focus on the face whereas the A7 III is very fussy it starts to hunt for focus and you're like oh my god what's going on here um, don't get me wrong though, A7 III is absolute kick-ass. Okay. Just even them up now. Should be looking exactly the same. Let's see if I can tell anything from the clarity. Rolling shutter, all that sort of crap. Same exact settings, 25 frames per second, 1 over 50, 7.1 for the f-stop, metering mode, similar, 1.7, 1 1.3, 1 ISO 100. I'll just leave them stationary for the clarity. Okay, now I've got the FX3 set on 50 frames per second. Everything else is the same. Shutter speed is at a, 1 over 100. Looking for the jumpy effect. I had the uh, focus mode wrong. I want to focus on white. Okay, so this is the correct test. Higher shutter speeds on the FX3. F7.1 for both cameras. The metering road's a lot more correct on the FX3 because I've got the high shutter speed, so it's a darker image, but more appropriate for what we're filming. Gonna leave it stationary there. How does that look? Gonna leave it on the car stationary.
Okay. Okay. Okay, both cameras are set to the same settings. 1 over 50, Iris 7.1 mm on the FX3 is at 1. It is also at 1, 1 1.3 on the A7 III. So essentially the settings are the same. Running the Tamron 28 to 75 on the A7 III. This is in my later tests. And running the 70 to 180 on the FX3. I'll leave it there. That sun's come out. It's just blown the shit out of the picture from what I can see. Especially on the FX3. There's no zebras on the um, A7 III, so I've got them set higher. I'm thinking for light. Yeah, okay. How hard is this going to be to tell? Stability test for both cameras walking around. Stability test, image blown out. <sighs> Same settings, 1 over 50, walking one camera strapped on top of the other camera. Cannot tell. I think it's a lot of BS. Okay, now we're going to go turn around, have a look at another angle. Again, there's a lot of saturation, a lot of saturation on that stupid thing, on the A7 III. What is it clear? That's recording. Recording now. Okay, I've now adjusted the FX3 to have a little bit more color. I've put it on something vivid with saturation just a bit higher to match the, the camera a bit closer. Everything else is exactly the same going into the photo.
Okay, both cameras, same settings. Sorry, now we've got the same settings. 7.1, metering mode at 0.7, ISO 100, picture profile off, 1 over 50 shutter speed, 7.1. They're literally framed as close as I could get them. I don't think I'll get better than that, so now I'm going to go into the photo. Should be dead center. Dead center. Okay, both cameras at 7.1. The A7 III, I've got it at ISO 125 instead of 100, just to jack up the metering mode to make it the same. So for all intensive purposes, it should be the same. Color, hmm. Picture profile off and I've got PT, whatever that means. Okay, in conclusion, for the money, you can't beat the A7 III. The FX3 is just way overpriced. If you want to sit there and compare how how good it is in comparison. Firstly, A7 III, oversampled 6K sensor down to 4K. That means your noise is going to be a little bit better when you, if you get noise that is, but it's supposedly smaller, less annoying type of noise, whereas the FX3 is supposed to be blocky. That being said, Man, these cameras are amazing, so noise, you'd really have to be in real darkness to pick it, in which case the FX3 is still better, because once you get to that dual, that dual native ISO, you know, in S-Log3 it's 12,800, other profiles it's less, um, you guys look, look up technical videos, they'll tell you all the different settings, there's a lot of people out there who've made charts and what have you, um, so what do I think, for a hobo, i.e. myself, the A7 III is plenty. If all you want to do is capture your life and capture events and say, I want to look back in 10 or 20 years' time and see what we were doing and what I was doing on holiday, then the A7 III is going to do a great job. Um, not to mention the fact that it can take photos, which suck in the A7S III slash FX3, but 12 megapixel versus 24. I've done that comparison as well, and let me tell you, it doesn't hold a candle to it. The minute you zoom in slightly, just forget it. The A7 III kills it. Okay, also, in video, if you want to go into APS-C mode on the A7 III, you can do that. Your 4K resolution still manages to be 4K. Gives you 1.5 1, 1 crop, so that's pretty awesome. Um, the FX3's got uh, what they call the, the Sony Zoom. I can't remember what the technical name for it is, but clear image zoom. They both do it, in which case you get the A7 III and then it can focus even further. You get 1.5 and then another 0.5 on top of that. So do your sums. But anyway, so if you've got a prime lens, the A7 III seems to be a little bit more flexible. Now, stability. FX3, even without the assisted, the crop uh, stabilization, I found it to be better. 
I mean, it's not, it's not worlds apart, but the FX3 is a little bit better for the image stabilization. Then once you put on the, um, the assisted, which crops in 1.1, then it's really, really good, really smooth. And at the end of the day, practical is what you want, yeah? You want to be able to pick the camera up and just walk with it and hopefully reduce some of that jitter in the footsteps that you typically get with the A7 III. If you're professional, FX3, A7S3, killer. You've got all the, all the modes, as in 25p, 50p, 100p, etc. Or if you're in America, in TSE, 30, 60, 120. Um, so you can do all those modes in 4K, and it focuses, and it's, it's really, really good. For a hobo like me, that doesn't matter. Generally speaking, I'm always filming in 25p. In your case, in America, you'd be 24 or 30. Um, so, yeah, like I said, if you want professional, then you go for the FX3 or A7S3. It's not going to be clearer. Don't make that mistake of thinking that, oh, I'm going to get this and it's going to be so clear. It's not. But the colours can be stretched, they can be manipulated. Um, not to mention the frame rate stabilisation. Much quicker to focus on the FX3, as I said before. Look, both of them are great cameras. If you're going to take a camera on holiday and you only could take one, take the A7 III because you're going to get the good photographs as well. And um, let me tell you, if you're on holiday, all you really want to do is picture, you know, an event and say, oh, you know, I'm on the boat. Oh, oh look at this. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, take a 10, 10, 15 second clip and you're done. In which case, you're sitting behind the camera and you can make it focus and do everything you want. You don't have to rely on it to do automatically what, for example, like I'm doing these talking heads now. I know both the cameras have got me in focus, but if I was moving, 100% the FX3 will always catch me sooner and always keep me in focus. So ask yourself this question, what good is clarity if you can't be in focus? You can have the most clear camera, but if you have to sit there and be behind it and manually focus, and you, you want to do this, well, I can't touch the camera, I'm 100 miles away. So in which case, they're both good, but the FX3 is better. Anyway, enough of my rambling. I hope, I hope this has helped you guys because I've got no benefit to putting this video on. I'm not like after a YouTube channel. I'm not even after thumbs up or anything. What I would like though is some opinions. I'd love you guys to hit me up in the comments and let me know, let me know what your experience has been. And you know, why, why hasn't the, um, the lovely folks, the, uh, these influencers, why haven't they done a direct comparison? I'm going to tell you why. It's clear because they don't want to get cut off by telling the truth, which is that the A7 III is an absolute kick-ass camera. Okay, so in conclusion, be safe, be happy, have a good life. Bye-bye.